In today's clip, I want to answer a rhetorical question about one of the cornerstones of personal finance, which is budgeting. As in, do I personally budget, both before I got to financial independence and now that I'm post-fire? Find out. Eyo, Zanpak here. Another weekday that now feels just like any other weekend day. So if you're here, please do me a huge favor and comment, like, and subscribe. Because social media is not the new black, but it is the new crack. Hmm. So today's topic is a personal one, as in do I personally budget? And uh, did I use it to get to fire? And do I still do so now? I got straight to the point, okay? The answer is actually, uh, nope. N not, not really. Uh, I, I wouldn't say not at all, but not really, okay? Let me be clear. This is only advisable if you're an expert like me, okay? I say I'm an expert because most people absolutely do need a budget to keep to a spending ceiling. I do not because I can easily tell uh, that I'm not up to my potential spending ceiling. And I will explain, okay, uh, with a couple of reasons. Reason one, or really, uh, I'll call this 1A, right? How do I know I'm not spending up to my ceiling? Because while I don't keep a budget, I do still write down uh, what I spend per month on non-recurring regular expenses and I do total them up at the end of the month. Uh, this helps me understand if I'm overspending on any particular predictable category, okay? This is basically half of budgeting, right? But missing the constricting half, which limits uh, what that total should aim towards, right? I do this because I'm naturally curious about my own evolving and changing spending patterns. However, I know myself enough uh, to know that I will never accidentally overspend, so I don't need a hard ceiling set. Uh, what usually ends up happening is that over the course of, let's say, you know, three to six months or over a year, I can easily discern a pattern of around how much my regular recurring spending actually is, and it's not unexpected at all. And reason one be, what about extraordinary expenditures, right? Because these will definitely come up, and they come up for me too, right? There are things like birthday presents, Christmas presents, Valentine's presents, home renovations, home repairs, real estate taxes, and all that kind of stuff, right? Now that, that are kind of spread out across a year, but they're not monthly recurring, right? It, it's more likely that any particular random month will have extraordinary expenses than not, actually. So how do I set a spend cap on these? I don't, right? Uh, not on a recurring basis. This is because I do also have a semblance of what I think my yearly total for this type of expenses should add up to, right? I simply don't set a hard cap like the monthly recurring expenses, but I do have a guideline in my head, right? Uh, like I said, if you can't be uh, realistically keeping track of a figure you're comfortable with, then setting a hard cap with some, some budgeting app would uh, probably be more beneficial for you, okay? And uh, so that was, I would call that one B, right? But the real reason, uh, number two, would be you have to understand the context of why I don't budget, right? Because uh, I think if you've seen some of my other clips, I've mentioned that I personally was already groomed since early childhood to be very, very disciplined with my spending, right? Which means that I was sa saving a significant percentage of my earnings uh, even before hearing about fire. and. Uh, and historically, I got to be a millionaire without ever adhering to any uh, explicit budget, right? So then, that's that's my main point, right? If I got to uh, being rich enough without having to use an explicit budget, why would I do so now that I am financially in, uh, financially independent? The answer, of course, is that I wouldn't, right? Because my long-form habits are very, very hard to change, right? Well, everyone's habits are hard to change. In my case, it just happens to be the habit is, is good. Right? Having said that though, I wanna make it clear that there are some expression, uh, exceptions to this line of thinking. For example, uh, since I've reclaimed like 100% of my time in, in exchange for a lack of a real employer and active income, I do and would uh, budget for specific categories of luxuries, like such as traveling, right? So my, my wifey wants to live in France, for example, for an extended amount of time, say three to six months. Uh, I would actually put a hard cap on uh, spending in uh, in a category like that, I don't know, like in the tens of Gs, right? Like maybe like up to 50K or something like that. The reason for this is because there are some types of uh, expenses that are simply out of the norm for my regular life that could only occur 
post fire. Right? And because I'm not used to accounting for it, right? It's much much easier to use a hard ceiling uh, to get a conversation started with people you know you're trying to work with, right? So travel traveling especially is one of those categories that could easily spiral out of control, right? I'm not saying obviously that cost is the only consideration uh, by any means in any category, right? But it is an essential aspect that needs to be accounted for, especially with for somebody like me who has no real job, right? Anyway. How about you guys? Do you keep a strict personal budget or have you graduated to simply using a mental guideline like me? Right? To me, that's been a slow and gradual process. Uh, and I, I just got lucky because my parents and their early conditioning, right? So don't worry about it if you're not automatically, uh, you, you're not automatically at the top tier quite yet. Okay. In the meantime, if you have any questions about personal finance, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely try to answer it and check out some other videos in the corners above. Cheers.